Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Jason and I am the creator of Iron Legion for Dying Light 1 and 2 and I'm going to be doing a quick summary of this latest update. So I believe this is the last and final uh, major update before the release of 1.0. Uh, I was intending to release this much sooner today, uh, but I was trying to uh, do some additional testing and also review some code that was sent over and uh, that caused a whole series of bugs, um, but I actually learned quite a few things, uh, and so I wanted to share with you guys kind of the end results of that. So uh, first and foremost, uh, you guys should take the time to look up how to find the crash logs uh, for Dying Light 2. Uh, it creates a log uh, every time you launch the game, and I actually, uh, from going through there, I found out that the texture files, or the RPAC texture uh, files were actually not correct so they were actually not updated properly and it was causing a bunch of issues with my game so um, you know as an additional you know fix for the mod I also found out that there was uh, issues with the uh, texture packs so I would highly recommend uh, using that uh, log to verify that all of your files are good to go and that you don't have any syntax errors with any of your additional mods uh, comes in handy for sure when figuring out what's going on with your mods. So uh, the primary focus for this latest update, so there's been a couple of updates uh, that have come in the last couple uh, pre-releases and they've all been focused on balance and then also on uh, finally in, uh, enhancing that enemy AI and trying to bring that realism into the game. For this final update, uh, previously I updated the human AI, continuing to update those guys to uh, try to make them climb and, and uh, get involved with the environment. And this latest version uh, is where I've also tried to now balance the human AI a little bit more along with actually going back and looking at the infected AI to try to make them more responsive inside this environment as well. So what I focused on uh, primarily uh, for this update were the Screamers, Volatiles, and Banshees, uh, along with a couple of quality of life updates for the Biters uh, and a few of the other uh, AI. I have not figured out the balance approach for things like the Suiciders or the Flooded um, Exploders. I haven't figured out um, exactly how I want to change those guys and I want to actually encounter them a little bit more inside the environments uh, that they live in before knowing how I'd like to make them uh, more challenging so I don't make them super annoying. So I want to go ahead and showcase for you guys. I apologize. Uh, my voice is a little scratchy today. Um, so I, bear with me here. I'm going to try to showcase the ultimate survivor. So as of this last uh, update, there are three splits. So we now officially have the casual survivor, the survivor, and the ultimate survivor. What this means is, and I'll try to summarize these on the front page as well, but essentially what this does is it allows um, players that do not want the super intense experience of the mod to be able to play the game with all of the AI updates. Um, so essentially if you want your game to have some of this enhanced detection, enhanced swarming on the map, uh, enhanced human AI, that kind of thing, you can get all of that and a closer form to the vanilla is going to be that casual survivor. So it'll allow you to go in there and basically have night, but it will introduce volatiles, but it will be much less volatiles, much less screamers, that kind of thing than the regular version of the mod. So. That's kind of the approach for casual survivor. Uh, survivor is now essentially what casual survivor was previously, if that makes sense. So essentially that is meant for the mid tier that they want a lore friendly game, that they essentially want all of the updates, the running goons, you know, the intense AI, but they also want those slow moving biters, uh, biters not climbing the environments, that kind of thing. Ultimate Survivor is meant for be, uh, to be more of a survivor game, uh, plus more intense for the biters actually running and jumping up the uh, buildings, and more density overall. Now, all of this is set up through the uh, config system, so none of this is uh, really set in stone. Uh, so no matter which version you pick, uh, you can go in there and customize this uh, mod to your uh, to your own liking uh, using the configuration update. 
there will be a couple more additions to that configuration and that continued split for the difficulty uh, before the final release of 1.0. But this uh, last update is really for you guys to give your feedback and let me know how that's going across the three different versions so I have a better idea of how much updating I need to do uh, for that final version uh, before 1.0. So a couple of things I have noticed you can actually see right now on the screen. So they've changed a little bit with the lighting uh, in this last update. Um, I started to get some very interesting lighting effects uh, since this last update. I will have to probably balance some of this out. I'm not sure if this is because of my weather system is using an older system now. Um, I'll have to continue to look at how they've changed the shaders. But if you continue to see things like little weird weather effects and that kind of thing, please just let me know. And I'm going to continue to try to keep an eye out. But uh, also, if you can do me a favor, if this is something that really bothers you, if you want to change this right away, do me a favor and remove the mod and also verify that the lighting conditions or whatever you're seeing doesn't exist in the vanilla game as well. That will make it easier for me to narrow down on what is specific to the mod and what is something they updated overall inside the, uh, the game itself. So let's go ahead and start running around. So this is the ultimate survivor version of the mod. I haven't showcased this in a while. Um, I've been focusing a lot of the balancing on trying to make the humans be able to survive inside the environment of uh, the world with casual survivor, now survivor mode. Uh, this ultimate survivor is meant uh, for the enemies to be more active inside the environment. Uh, you can see here the Banshee is now running around this environment. So she's actively searching and trying to find the player. Uh, this makes her a much uh, greater threat than she was previously. Uh, before she would just kind of stand there uh, and wait for the player to come up. Now she's actually moving around this environment and actively searching for the player. Um, I've continued to try to look at options for turning off things like the prediction of where she's doing the jump attack. Um, but uh, this seems to be something hard-coded into the game itself. Uh, so you do still have to use that dodge to avoid uh, her jump attack if, uh, if, if that's something that you know, you're able to do in time. Um, the other AI that are inside the environment, so we need to move over a little bit for it to actually switch uh, to all these spawns for night. So this is still an issue in the game where basically it just doesn't refresh that uh, zone. So this zone is not getting a, uh, a refresh on its spawn until you start to kind of run around the map. Uh, so this is daytime. You can see over there we're starting to get night. And as we start to head in this direction, you can start to see that we are now in the nighttime. So let me see if I can get out of here and reset a little bit so that we can talk about all these new updates. So the focus here was trying to get these uh, predators crawling through the environment and actually seeking out the player in a way that was creepy and, and not uh, so static as it was before. And to help with that, uh, I, cur I wrote a new system in here which basically allows them uh, to do just that. So they will be uh, is searching the environment and actively trying to find the player. Uh, and I have tried to uh, make a, a design move here for the screamers uh, that hopefully you guys will like. So here's the concept. So essentially uh, the default version of the screamers are their essentially cameras. So they just kind of stand there, they wait for the player to arrive, um, and then they alert. And that's that's pretty much the extent uh, of that AI. That's, that's pretty much all they do. Um, well, now the change uh, for these guys is that they are now crawling around this environment. So they are actually uh, using uh, effects similar to the volatiles and actively crawling through the environment very slowly. Uh, so this gives them this uh, very edgy kind of feel of their seeking the player uh, inside this uh, inside this area and they will continue to roam that area and try to find you. This will give them some basic ability to climb as well. So they'll stick pretty low so they're, they're not normally going to go very high up but they will start to go on tops of vehicles and lower buildings and actively search for that player. 
Volatiles are also crawling through the environment. So you can see down to the right there. We also have volatiles climbing through this environment. And now they're actually, I was able to figure out some systems here to make them move each other out of the way. So they'll actually uh, bump other uh, AI types out of the way. So they will be less likely to get stuck um, up against the biter. So they will actually move uh, that biter out of the way and continue to progress uh, down the street. Let's see if we can follow this volatile as he progresses. So the idea is, is that they're actively seeking out the uh, player. And if they see the player, so this is based on the line of sight. So I did narrow down their vision here to where they are no longer just hearing uh, or immediately spotting you, but rather they're actively seeking you out in this environment. And if you get in their pathway, then they will spot you very quickly. Um, I did try to focus most of this um, on the stealth players. So the stealth players should be able to move inside this environment without upsetting uh, the AI. So they should be able to actually um, crawl along these environments and crouch uh, and use that stealth mechanic uh, once again without upsetting the world too much. Um, but as you can see, uh, that ground is pretty much flooded uh, with zombies at this point uh, for this uh, higher level difficulty for ultimate survivor. So once you actually get on the ground, uh, you have to move very fast in order to survive inside this environment. Let's continue to follow this guy. Noise is still a problem inside the environment, so these guys will... Uh, actively be listening for the player. Once you start making a lot of noise or noise is uh, detected, they will shift their priorities. So if we have like a throwing knife here. You can see that you can use those throwing knives to also distract enemies. Um, but if you make a noise inside the environment, it will cause uh, the uh, zombies and the special infected to stop what they're doing and head over towards uh, that noise. So if you're trying to clear that environment or if you're trying to travel around and you need to go on the ground, then you need to start using things like decoys, coins, throwing knives, that kind of thing to try to move the map out of your way um, and make them less likely to detect you. Also, I have added a, a lot of uh, randomization to their movement. So hopefully now they won't just be doing the same thing over and over before they would be following kind of a similar path. Uh, now the focus is just allowing them to move freely in this environment and kind of pick their pathway um, as they go. And so this can lead to them to crawling up on tops of the buildings. This can lead to them crawling across the tops of cars, uh, but they will be searching and moving based on noise. So we also have humans still spawning into this environment at night every now and then. Uh, some of these are due to glitches and then others are, the, are due to little small encounters that are uh, programmed to happen during night. This will help move the map around uh, and shift that play field. Uh, so as you're inside of the environment and you're trying to do quests or whatever, uh, the idea or the hope is, is that that uh, environment is changing around you. And so you have to keep an eye on what's happening around you as well. Uh, new zombies will move into the space and will continue to, uh, to show up as you're starting to clear areas out. So the idea here is that for the ultimate survivors, there are still a good amount of volatiles. It's actually um, the same amount that have been in there before. Uh, for the casual survivor, um, this has been greatly reduced. Uh, and that's the hope is that it will allow players that want to play the mod that do not want such intense nights uh, that it will help lower the number of volatiles inside the environment but I've also lowered the density. So it's also looking at a difficult play space um, or play environment, but not as uh, intense uh, for those players that want to you know, play co-op and have a more casual experience with their friends. Some of the other things that I've added here are the ability for the uh, biters to work together in kind of a horde mentality. So as they start to group towards enemies uh, and they start to, uh, encounter a an enemy that they search seek uh, I'll just seek out inside this environment uh, they will then move together uh, to try to stick together inside that environment and work together 
uh, to find more enemies uh, to prey on. And so uh, if you start to cause things like chases or events that could cause the map to start to collect, you now have a mini horde inside that environment that they will start to pull together uh, and they will start to move together uh, after this event. So you've now kind of clustered them at that location. And the hope here is that allows you to um, basically have a bit more of an immersive environment to where you now have to pick a new exit uh, point for your uh, for where you leave afterwards, uh, so that you're not basically able to just freely move uh, around the map, upset the map, and then immediately exit the same location. As you can see here, banshees are still being spawned in. Special infected are being spawned in when you cause a chase to start, and those will stay inside this environment and continue to get upset and continue to call reinforcements. Uh, if you continue to tip them off and so this will allow you to uh, have a more challenging time inside this environment making sure that you use different pathways uh, to navigate the space additionally for the casual version uh, and for the ultimate version alike all three actually um, loot has been rebalanced uh, so I've introduced a new system where basically uh, it's leaning more on a system that was disabled uh, in the base game which is where you should have unique uh, loot kind of dependent on the location that you're at uh, so you should find specific items in the metro you should find specific objects in the kitchen that kind of thing uh, to where you shouldn't have to uh, find just kind of a general uh, loot across the entire map. It should be a little bit more uh, diversified. I've added the uh, valuable items that I've required in some of the new uh, crafting components for the collectibles, the dynamite, that kind of thing. I've added more of those to the environment. And I've tried to focus on making uh, the human AI kind of the subject um, of uh, loot. So if you want to start finding more things like walkie-talkies, that kind of thing, you have to start attacking uh, more of the bandits uh, to make the humans more of a sought-out uh, enemy inside the environment and also worthwhile fighting them and, uh, and taking them out. Along with that, I've also turned on the base uh, camp's uh, loot as well. So if you find an enemy bandit camp, they will also have loot specific to their base camp. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys have been great uh, offering all sorts of feedback and continuing to support me through the development. Thank you guys so much for all the continued support. And uh, there's so many things to showcase here. I really want to try to save time here so that I can start building that list for the final 1.0 release. Uh, as I mentioned, this is going to be really the last pre-release before 1.0 is released and uh, I look forward to hearing your guys feedback please let me know what's going on uh, down boots on the ground and uh, if you guys are having bugs make sure to report those and try to continue to do that testing for me so that we can get this as solid as possible before that 1.0 release all right guys thank you so much and I look forward to talking to everybody here soon